back when I was in high school, my best friend's mom was judgmental and, well, a bit hostile. It was the attitude more than anything that kept me from hanging out over at her house. One day, my friend said her mother came home white as a ghost the night before because when she and her friends had come out of the grocery store, they stopped and noticed someone in the back seat. She was thinking it was my friend, but as she stepped closer, she saw that it was an elderly woman. She started to go to the car, but her friends stopped her and said that she probably got off the bus from the assisted living center and she had better call the police and let them handle it. She did, and within minutes, because they were practically around the block, the police car pulled up and she pointed to her car. The officer walked up to the window and she watched as the officer snatched the door open and literally yanked the old woman out and pushed her against the car and frisked her. My friend's mom was horrified until the officer snatched the wig off the man's head. She was now frantic because if it hadn't been for her friends, she would have gotten in and offered her a ride home. So check your back seat. This story happened back in 2017. I was trick-or-treating when my legs started to hurt like hell. Thankfully, my house was nearby, so I walked home. My dad checked on me and said that he was going to be at the house across the lawn. I said okay, and my dad left. I was laying on the couch eating some candy when suddenly my body went numb and I couldn't move. My vision got weird. The best way to put it is big black snowflakes. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. I was suddenly able to move my head and looked into the other room where I saw a tall figure walking very slowly. But then, it all ended, and I was able to move again. I told my mom about it, along with a few friends. If any of you have any good explanations on why this happened, please tell me. So a couple of days ago, my boyfriend and I were driving up his road that's in the middle of the woods, and as we turn a corner, we first see the deer. The deer didn't even flinch at our car coming up the road, which was weird. Then we saw it. Now, I'm not normally a scared person, but seeing this thing almost made me piss myself. It looked as if this thing was talking to the deer. It had to be at least eight feet tall, very thin, and it was all black, with wings. It flew up right in front of the car, and my boyfriend slammed on the brakes, turns to me and says, Tell me you saw that, and asked me to describe it to him, as to make sure he wasn't going crazy. I did, and we sped all the way home. This all happened in about a minute, although it felt like longer. I was telling my dad about it, and he saw the same exact creature years earlier at my sister's bus stop. He tried to convince my sister it was a garbage bag or something, but my sister's response was, Daddy, that thing was too fast and too big to be a trash bag. And all my dad could say was, I don't know. If anyone has any idea what this could be, I'd appreciate a comment. I'm very skeptical about these things, and I'm looking for a more logical explanation. I guess I'll start with a background. I'm a 33-year-old female, but this story takes place when I was a teenager living in a suburb of Chicago. The village I lived in was quiet and middle class. We lived like a mile from the police station, and the worst crimes we had was a murder or two and a robbery, once in a blue moon. 99% of the time, boring. Unless you had a car, you were just stuck walking around the park at night with your friends. Anyway. One night, my girlfriend and I decided to go hang out at a park with some guys at like 12 a.m. The night was a bit windy and had a full moon. I even got a kiss that night from the boy I liked. But the night wasn't just fun and hanging out late. There's a deep forest in the park with a stream and a playground right next to it. There's two bridges, one made of wood and one bridge made of rocks that's rarely used because it's deeper in the forest. We hung around on the swings and chatted and just spent the evening together. 
I'm sitting and just looking around, talking and enjoying the peace and quiet and the moonlight. I have a full view of the forest and the dip of earth that I know leads to the stream. Then I see something moving over there, some dark shape. It looked like it was crawling out of the forest. An arm, then another arm. It pulls itself out of the ditch, a figure darker than the surrounding forest. And I'm sitting there, frozen. I think I'm seeing things. It just kind of lays there on the ground, but doesn't move. A flash of fear grips me. What if it comes this way? I look to my friends, and no one notices anything. I look back, and it's gone. Did it go back, or go somewhere? I really wanted to get out of there. Then one friend asks, Did you guys hear about the urban legend of the rock bridge over the stream? Apparently, some kids or something played on the bridge and fell over and died. What a thing to say after what I just saw. But I didn't ask anyone anything and just pretended I didn't see anything. The experience stuck with me. I never talked about it because I thought it must have been my imagination. Things like that only happen in scary movies, right? I rarely went to the park after that. And black thing if you're real I hope we never meet again who knows what would have happened if you saw me the same time that I saw you this isn't really a scary story but more of a creepy one my friend's dad's family used to live in the woods near Eureka Springs Arkansas my friend's uncle was the oldest of three kids and was allowed to explore the woods on his own, even though he was only about nine. One day, he came across a little cottage nestled in the woods. He knocked on the door and was greeted by two old ladies. He promptly asked for some water, as he had been exploring for hours. The ladies invited him in and gave him milk and cookies and sat down and talked with him while he pet their cat. They talked for a while and they eventually invited him in to stay for dinner and spend the night, because it was getting dark and he was a ways from home. His parents were pretty used to him being in the woods for nights without coming back, so he accepted without question. He spent the night without incident and returned home the next morning. He visited many more times over the next year, and one day they told him to bring his parents and brothers the next time he came. So the next week, the whole family embarked on the long trek to the cottage. When they arrived, however, they found the remains of a small cottage that appeared to have been abandoned for years. Everyone was very confused, as they all trusted that my friend's uncle had visited the women many times. They had absolutely no idea what had happened, or if my friend's uncle had actually been visiting anybody to make things even weirder, as they were leaving, an old, skinny, white cat ran past them, darting into the trees, leaving them in utter shock. I was about the age of 13 when this story took place. I lived in an old house just on the outside of a large city, and was surrounded by cornfields and forests. I had lived there all of my life before this happened. It was a dreary summer night, which is mostly normal for the place I live. But on this particular night, something just felt... off. I had come home from soccer practice around 6 p.m., and my parents always had me in bed by 8. The night went on as usual. I ate dinner, played with my little sister, and did some weightlifting before bed. I got into bed around 7.45. This story will make better sense if I tell you some things about me. I'm a restless sleeper. I toss and turn and get up periodically throughout the night, and I've always had a fascination with the afterlife. Okay, back to the story. I'm not sure exactly what time I fell asleep, but I didn't really have my usual episodes throughout the night. This was the first night I slept peacefully in years. Then, I was suddenly awoken 
by a strange noise coming from the bathroom in my bedroom. Since I had to use the bathroom anyway, I decided to go check it out. I thought it might be a mouse or a bat since we live in the country and the house is old and has holes in the older walls. I went into the bathroom. I didn't see anything, so I proceeded on my way to pee. Afterwards, I washed my hands and face, and when I was washing my face, I looked up at the large mirror that overhangs my sink. I thought I saw something behind me, but I thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me. I dried my face off and looked up at the mirror again. Right behind me there was a little girl clutching my body, almost as if she was hiding from something. Her ghostly outline scared me at first, but as I kept looking, I could tell that whatever was scaring her was coming from the basement. So I walked to my basement door, and I opened it slightly at first because I was very scared of what might be behind it. I've lived in this house my entire life and have never been in the basement. My dad mentioned to me that it had three separate parts, all separated by small windows that you could barely fit through. So I walked down the basement steps and got down to the bottom where the light switch was. I turned it on and everything seemed like it was okay until I heard what sounded like crying from one of the other parts of the basement. In my mind, I was thinking, screw this. But in my heart, I knew I had to see what it was. So I ventured through that part of the basement. I still heard the crying, but since it was so dark, I couldn't see anything. Something gave me the urge to go to the far corner of the room, because the way the moonlight reflected off the floor, you could kind of see with what little light you had. I walked over to the corner and stared. There, in the middle of the room, was a chair. It had shackles for the feet and what looked like to be some type of restraint for arms or something like that. That's when I noticed that there was someone sitting in that chair. I walked closer, only to reveal that it was the same little girl's ghost that had been crying previously in the bathroom. She had needles stuck in her arms, draining some type of fluid into her. All was quiet, until she started screaming. It was so high-pitched I thought it sounded like a siren, or something of that nature. She was saying words, but I couldn't make out anything she was saying, until she spoke five menacing words that made my heart sink. She said, Get out. Daddy is coming. Not even thinking twice, I sprinted up the basement stairs, tripping over my own feet, and fell flat on my face once I reached the top. I got back up and ran to my parents' room. I told them what happened. They went down there and checked everything out. I told them about the chair and the little girl that was screaming. They told me that there was no chair in the basement, and that there had never been three parts of the basement. Not believing them, I walked back down there, and the room that I saw the chair in wasn't even there. There had only ever been two parts of the basement, my dad said. I told him what I saw, and how I knew there had to be some mistake. But I never did see that part of the basement again. I'm 18 now and I decided to do some research on the house to see if there's any history that could have caused it. I came across an article of a man who had been arrested in 1868 for doing lab experiments on all of his children. After the man was arrested, the police found all 12 skeletons of his children stuffed behind the basement stairs under debris and concrete. Now that I finally moved out of that house, and now that I finally have an answer as to what I saw that night, I'm finally at peace. But those five words still hang over me to this day. Get out. Daddy is coming.